Hi everyone. Today I have myself Chuan Ting and Joachim presenting Harnessing ICT in E2K Classroom and we are from St. Nicholas Girls School. Okay, maybe let me give you a background in story about how we started. So basically we were we were doing pen and paper all along and we decided that we wanted to try out by merging ICT with, with E2K to allow a real-time feedback and to reduce the time that students have to wait for feedback. So in this session, we'll be talking about how the an ICT E2K lesson flow and what are some things, what are some tools that we use to incorporate ICT. Okay, so how each lesson goes is that for the start of every E2K lesson, there is um, a story, so introduction to the research. And then we also have prepared a Google site where it will include all the lessons, like activity one, activity two, and three. Okay, and for and we use mainly Padlet for pupils to input their research ideas, results. They could come in form of photos or even typing and any creative ways that the pupils can use the iPad to key into Padlet. Okay, and, and we as teachers, we'll also be having our own iPad and laptop to comment and provide feedback. So with two teachers, we will split ourselves and uh, give targeted feedback to various groups. And at the end of every session, we actually have exit tickets via Padlet so pupils can actually track their progress. And at the end of their one and two year journey of E2K, they will be able to see how they have developed in their scientific knowledge and their way of research. Okay, let's move on to how each lesson flow. Okay, so firstly, like I said, there's a story and then we use Google site as a main hosting platform for all the different um, activities. So for P5, because it's just the start of E2K, they will mainly be capturing results by photo and the discussion is pretty much simpler. So Padlet would suffice. But for P6, we allow them to use laptop because it requires a bit more typing when they need to create their own protocol and to present their data in tables. So for P6, we are mainly using Google document. And with, with these two tools, the teachers are still the one who will be logged in to provide any real-time feedback and questioning where the pupils can actually immediately question, um, answer the questions or think about it and modify their data or any um, thoughts that they have. Okay, so this is a sample of how, how the Google site looks like. Here, there's a Padlet link where once they scan using the iPad, we can project it on the um, screen and then they can scan and then they can start to add start to be inside the Padlet to start to key in their comments, okay? So you can see at the end of, for the whole E2K uh, in P5, we have actually had all the activities embedded inside. So it's like a one-stop access to all the Padlets. Okay, so now let's take a look at a sample of how the Padlet looks like. So in this, they are actually told to arrange the protocol. Here, so they actually typed it in Padlet and together they actually use their own creative ways to take pictures of how their, how their experiment was conducted and during presentation, they will also use this case. Okay, moving on to the next slide. We actually allow each group to have two iPads and they use it in whichever way they like. Usually, sometimes they like to take pictures. Sometimes they will do a collage based on whichever tools that they prefer. And we, for the P5, we mainly focus on Padlet as our main form of hosting all the presentations. Okay, so one, one very good thing about iPad is that it allows them some space and it provides them the tool for 
research. So if they need extra help or they do not understand a concept, they are allowed to actually research and then have a better understanding. So during presentation, they can actually showcase these um, new findings to the rest of the E2K classmates. Okay, and next, during presentation time, it is also um, very clear as a visual aid to show how each group has decided to tabulate their results. And we can also compare to see how different ways of presenting their data would allow the viewers to understand the experiment better. And teacher is also uh, able to zoom in to whichever part the teacher wants to focus on so that pupils can actually understand and let them bring their focus to whichever part that requires improvement or whichever part that is done well. Okay, so with their presentation, you can see that the their picture is being zoomed in and they can actually start to speak with the pictures behind helping them in their presentation. Okay, including their results, it is also quite, quite clear. Sometimes in the table, it's also pretty user-friendly. Okay, so in, in previous times we had for P6, there's, since it is a little more in-depth, they used to be writing in pen and paper. So, meaning that we had to prepare huge butcher sheets. So, look at this. Okay, they even prepared a table and then they, we even included a graph paper. So, I will show you some samples of how we used to do it in the past. So, let me zoom in to show you one of the graphs. So, they even had to draw the graph. But you see that because this is not one of the skills that they are required to know. So, the graph may be a bit improportionate. So with, with this, they are also very, it's also very difficult for them to make any changes. So if they needed to make any changes to the protocol, they have to erase or use a lot of correction tape. So if the teacher gives them real-time feedback, there is a lot of time wasted to <clears throat> do corrections. So moving on to what we have improved on, so in our P6 protocol writing, we actually embark on Google Documents where we provide a template like this without, without all the protocol, of course, and they will just have to key in any key in the protocol based on the group discussion. Okay, and then um, we can actually provide feedback as such. So it is a real-time and a fast free way of commenting and resolving. So I can I can ask them questions. Okay, and they can they can click here to resolve the issue once they have done with it. So we also included a role for approval. So once it is approved, we will type it here and they know that they can move on to the next step. Okay, and moving on to data collection, we also have prepared um, a table. We also, oh no, sorry, we didn't prepare a table, but the students will actually create their own table and then we will then help them plot it into the graph. Yeah, so based on what they have typed in in the table, we will transfer to our own Excel template and then once that is done, it will be automatically converted into a table, because, uh, into a graph. So that marks the entire process of the results capturing. Okay, I will now pass on to my colleague Joachim for the next part of our presentation. Thank you, Chuan Ting. Hi, I'm Joachim. I'll be presenting to you Embedding Formative Assessment within E2K. We have taken this um, activating students as owner of their own learning by uh, reading the Dylan William book on formative assessment. So we find that it is important for students to uh, have ownership in their own learning. Why is it so? 
Because no matter how much our student learned in our classroom, if they leave the school with the passion for knowledge extinguished, we basically had failed them. So how do we use formative assessment in E2K and how do we measure the success criteria? Basically, what we did is we used the reflection part for formative assessment. We gave them time for their own reflection for their own learning. So by giving them time for to reflect their learning, it makes them more powerful learners and also ultimately increase their achievement. So what we do is we have exit tickets like what Tranti had presented. We use Padlet for exit tickets and then we have um, the exit tickets kept for all the sessions. So from there, we can return it back to the students to reflect on their learning for the first session, second session, and so on and so forth. So they can also reflect on their first lesson for E2K till the last lesson in E2K and see how much they have learned by reading their own self-reflection in the exit tickets. Next, uh, for deeper coverage of content, Okay, what we do is normally we will go through the content slowly. We incorporated students' uh, classrooms formative assessment that covers the content slowly. And also, um, we found that with this lower coverage, it actually makes them think deeper and we don't really need to reteach much. Same goes for our classroom teaching. Um, if we go too fast, obviously, there's a lot of time that students may not understand what you're saying. So in E2K, because it's a much deeper content, uh, we normally go slowly, which is roughly about two to three sessions per lesson that allows them to have a, a much deeper cover coverage and also let them understand the lesson better. Okay. Um, learning portfolios is the next uh, formative assessment that we incorporated in E2K. Uh, what we do is that because we have given them the exit tickets to key in in the Padlet, uh, we keep all these exit tickets and also we have kept all their results that has been presented in E2K. So at the end of the year, normally we will make them reflect and also we will let them have all those um, informations or all those data that they have keyed in so that they can take a look at them and reflect on their learning, at the same time create their own portfolio for their own learning. So they, are they will be able to see from the first session, how do they think, to the last session, how do they think, and ultimately at the end of the year, how, is the, how will E2K help them in terms of their learning of science and the passion for learning science? Reflection using ICT for E2K. What is the advantage and what are the challenges that we face? Of course, ICT is... Um, not easy for everybody to try it out, but definitely after a few years of trial, trial and error, we find that there are actually quite a fair bit of advantages to when we engage the students using ICT tools. So for example, we gave them iPads and um, they find it easier for them to do further research because the internet is accessible for them and they can easily record or even find out more details about their experimental research. Real-time feedback, we ask them to post up into the um, Padlet where whatever questions or even their findings and their friends and the teachers can give them feedback almost immediately. We do not need to wait for the teachers to give feedback for uh, one group and then move on to the second group. The teachers can, like both teachers can online um, give feedback to the students as and when they start posting. Also, uh, being environmentally friendly, we try to reduce the wastage of paper. So without the butcher paper, everything is online. So there is actually zero wastage of paper other than the worksheet that they are given. We also allow the students to engage in self-directed learning via researching. So we don't stop them from doing their own research. We allow them to go online, Google, find, and then maybe quote the um, findings win within their uh, results so that we know that these are the findings that they have used from this particular website. Students are also able to capture images of their setup and results. They can take videos of the entire time lapse of their experimental uh, results. They can also use images to capture the before and after. And also from uh, using the iPads, they can also key in the relevant data and present it properly for the whole class to see. Of course, there will be challenges uh, if when we use ICT. Uh, definitely, the technical support needs to be very, very strong. So we luckily in our school, we have iPads available, we have uh, uh, laptops available, and the Wi-Fi system is not bad. So the technical support part, uh, we do 
We do face a little bit occasionally, but it's okay. And then iPad's compatibility to Google app because of um, the Google apps that we are using mostly, sometimes it is not uh, compatible. We will find it quite troublesome for them to you know, put in data or even present. So laptops will be a better choice. But again, laptops is harder for them to take pictures, take videos. So we need to toggle between the two, um, the two devices and ensure that you know, their results are presented properly. Time for preparation, uh, preparing the slides. Uh, as you can see from Chan Ding's presentation, we need to prepare a lot of slides. We need to prepare a lot of like um, padlets and things ready for the students to key in their data to, uh, how to say, to go into the, the Google site to take a look at what is the next lesson and what are the details. Okay, so this is the time that we need for the preparation and also teachers' readiness to embrace ICT. Not all teachers are ready to step into this ICT journey to make sure that, you know, we are uh, there to use ICT. Okay, and our, our next part challenge will be using SLS for E2K and uh, hopefully we can instead of using Google Slide, we can put into SLS so that um, since students have the account, it's easier for them to access and also it's easier for them to use SLS as it is a platform that they have been using, uh, especially now after the HBL. Okay, that's all we have for uh, our presentation. I hope it helps you in your uh, E2K journey. Thank you.